if you zoom in, see, it looks kind of like an uh, overcast day or something like that. So by adding a little bit of uh, atmospheric haze here, see here, now it starts to feel like high atmosphere. It feels like something I'm looking way up in the sky, right? The value feels right versus, oh, you know, let me turn this off. This feels overcast, back on, feels like daylight, right? There's a sun in the air, and you can see, you can feel the, uh, the oxygen, the hydrogen in between you and this object, creating that very light blue haze. Here I brighten up some of the ground just to play up the contrast. Right? The bounce light is not going to be this hot in reality because this eyeball again is like a thousand feet above the ground. Right? This eyeball is like this high, super super high up. So it's not really going to get a bounce this high. But I am creating an entertainment piece here, and I want to make sure my creature gets priority in the read, and especially in the faces and his details. I want those areas to pop out. So by bringing up the contrast in some of these areas, it helps do that. So again, a little bit more of an artistic license to extract the design. And a few more details. So these details that shouldn't be here. You see, this, this layer should actually belong in the alien layer because it's not part of the sandwich layer, but just to save time, I just probably forgot and put it in there. But it just shouldn't really be there. Uh, and then these little birds. This is to give scale, again, because when you want to uh, show something that merges together like this background alien in the sky, you create something that overlaps all of it. So this, these birds, for example, overlaps that. It overlaps the alien because it's in front, and it overlaps the sky. And by looking at that, it gives you this huge sense of scale. So let me turn on the adjustment layer as you can see. Right. So it feels huge because we all humans know how big a bird is. So by knowing that a bird is up here flying and it's intersecting this object, it makes this object here even bigger. See, see. So this works for trees, it works for human beings, right? Anything that's human scaled, when you do this kind of overlapping, it helps uh, sell your scale, right? Again, this layer shouldn't be here as well. This is the, just sharpening up the teeth, right? So these are very easy to do. I just I could just move them down to the uh, the alien layer and I'll basically keep those in its own uh, separate uh, layer group, okay? And the last thing we did here is the adjustment layer. So this is, see all here, there's all a bunch of adjustments. So this is bring the contrast back. You can see without these, he's very, very light. He's almost too light. Looks like he's in a haze. So by using these layers, we could then bring all that balance back. So the first one is a quick level adjuster, bringing high, higher contrast. So, because at the end of the day, we still have to sell this design. This painting is done to sell a design and to sell a small story of like this huge alien floating over a Japanese countryside, yeah? So priority is the, is the alien here. So that way we could confirm the design, build into 3D and do whatever it is, right? That's, that's, that's your job. The storytelling is almost like a bonus on top of that. It's like, you, could, you know, you could get two things done at the same time. Um, and then I added over a blue wash over the whole thing. Right, very slight, this is on like 13%, you can see here. And this gels everything together. This gels the alien, the background, everything as one. This is a color adjuster. I warmed up the entire scene a little bit. He's a little bit too cool for my liking. I want to just keep it uh, cool as in temperature. Okay, not cool as in, uh, it's a cool image, you know, not just in temperature. I want to warm it up a little bit. To say it's a warmer day, it's like a summer day in Japan, countryside, you know, Osaka or something like that, right? I really want to create that kind of, uh, um, that feeling of Japanese countryside. So I warmed it up to give it a little bit of uh, the heat from the sun. This layer, no idea what it is, or oh, something in the eye. I think I felt like it needs a little bit more um, uh, reflection. So again, this layer shouldn't really be here, but it's pretty easy to uh, remove, such a small adjustment. And then another level adjuster to bring out the contrast you can see on off, pretty big adjustment here, simply because I want to pop this alien out. I want to make sure he reads. And then this last layer is just signing the name. See, that's it. Way down here. All right, signing your name, date, what's for. So here in this case, my name, demo, done on July 2010. So again, for archival reasons, not to show off who did it. It's purely for uh, the art department. And then, you know, that's about it. This is this is this painting. So I'm just going to zoom in here and see if there's anything else we should mention. Here's a line drawing. So line drawing we got rid of just really, really early on. Okay. So let's, uh, let's just do some zoom-ins here. And, oh, let's just turn on a black and white layer to check our values. You can see overall the value reads. So if I shrink it down very, very small, Photoshop don't freak out. Now the aliens still are main priority and that he is floating above this landscape. Another thing you could do is like at this level, just blur your eyes, you know, tra train your eye to blur out and see if you can read the forms, see if you can see the belly, the eyes and all that kind of stuff, even if your eyes are blurred out. 
Okay, let's turn this on. So let's zoom in here. It's really fun to play with these as a storytelling point because you can almost see it if this is a film. And we start shooting down here and then the actors look up and we do this massive, uh, you know, 10 second pan up to this creature. Quite fun and all these little details. You can have a little spaceship, for example, fly up, you know, or in this case, it's probably maybe you could do a, like a kite that got loose from a kid or something like that. And the kite is just going to flying away and allows us to uh, use the kite as a way to track the camera and then reveal the alien uh, underneath, which is very, very big. You can see here, boah. and then eventually the kite gets over here and then like he chews it or something, you know, so just filmmaking stuff. And then the birds go away. All right, so very, very massive creature, which is kind of fun, very fun to paint this kind of subject matter because something we don't see on this planet, um, not very often at least, <laughs> maybe blue whales or something, but even this, this creature is, will, will be very massive. Okay, so you know that's about it for, for this tutorial. So again, I'll turn off some of these layers. So the importance of this one, a little bit different from the rest, is simply this one, right? What you see here is the ability to extract your design out. So I can move them around. Because sometimes I've worked in many studios where the art department turns in a painting like this that has everything on a layer. And then the, uh, the either the marketing team or the team that's helping editing the film or try to get it uh, green lit uh, will actually take our PSD files and animate them. So in this case, we could do things like this where you see this guy sort of moves in, do, 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 you know. So again, there's some adjustment layers I should probably move away. But if I just do it like this, I could take them out and just move them separately like this. You see, very useful for editing, and I've seen this done many times in the studios, where they'll use your art uh, and put it in different contexts, where the directors could re-edit, almost make a film based just on paintings, because you could make this slight, slight movements like this, where you could do th things where the birds move, boom, 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 right? So you could do all sorts of interesting little things here. And let me select the birds here, which layer is the bird, right? So you can select these layers you know like they can actually animate these go and do, 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 do like this it's almost like a 2d animation which is quite fun because they do need to cut these films for the uh, audience to understand i mean for the uh, internal team to understand so they'll use your paintings to do these kind of things so keeping things on layers definitely does help but the drawback of that is that it's a little slower to work with right i like to actually prefer i like i prefer to paint stuff without any layers just one or two layers and just do it raw it's the fastest result and it gives you the most uh, freedom and most i guess the creative energy when you see the painting gets finished um, and this do by doing it with all the layers still on, it kills a little bit of the fluid and the and the energy that goes into creating such a painting. So, but in production, this is something you have to do, you know, because it's a part of the job. It's, you're not an artist; you're making things that somebody else could use, right? So, if you just do a one-off painting, uh, maybe it's cool, but the department needs it to be on layers so they could use it for marketing, they could use it for all that. You have to have the skill to do so. You can't be like, oh no, I don't paint with layers; I just do it one thing. You you go figure it out. Um, doesn't get you too far in a lot of production studios, uh, especially uh, these massive companies like you know, Electronic Arts and Ubisoft and these kind of companies that uh, require the concept artists to do a lot more, a lot more than just do beautiful little drawings, right? You have to do a lot more uh, than that on the job. So, anyways, hopefully this tutorial helped you guys see, you know, how these high res things come together. Uh, next week we'll see, we'll see if we could do a um, more of a drawing thing because I did see some requests on the YouTube as far as my email, uh, in my email as well about that. Um, and I'll, I'll also ask Norman because I've done this thing called master class for the Nomen class um, to see if we could just release some of those because that was done about almost a year ago where I actually drew a bunch of little spaceships and see if we could just release them out um, because I don't think they're turned into DVDs or anything like that so or I actually was going to do something else this week which is um, where did it go let me see is it this uh, let me see yeah it's this thing I was going to do this this week maybe I'll do this next week let me load it up Assuming Photoshop don't crash on me here. Two big files, okay. This was a quite a fun little thing, a character design that we did in class. Very, very quick. This is, uh, you can see if I zoom in, it's like super, super quick. But, you know, if you guys want to see this, I'll do the next, uh, go over this one next week. It's quite fun. It's a very quick way to design characters, to give it a, almost a photo real look to it. It looks like um, slightly rendered out in 3D. You see if you zoom out, all right. It works at that level. Right, some kind of global illumination render. So it was a tutorial to show uh, students how to actually do that. So I might do this next week as well. So we'll see. Anyways, let's close that. So one more look at this. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying these. And uh, I will see you guys uh, in next week. All right, bye-bye.